So this is the video series to watch if you're interested in how car makers develop a 4x4. In it I talk to two, two Toyota Australia engineers who are involved in the LC300 development. Part 1 we talk about general development, part 2 off-road tech, part 3 was drivetrain and dynamics and this is part 4 accessories and specifications and you can read more at my website at l2sfbc.com forward slash lc300. Don't forget my other LC300 content, the comparison and prototype drive, the reader Q&A, as well as the towing analysis. You can use the chapter links to jump around. And now, on with the interview. We did get a lot of feedback on, uh, especially items such as accessorization, making sure that yeah. the vehicle could be accessorized. That, that was really one of the, the really big feedback items we had. Um, you know, we can't make a car for... That, that, that has everything on it, that, that's why we have the, especially the genuine accessories, making sure that they can be fitted onto the vehicle. I understand that the winch bar can't be fitted to all models, particularly the GR Sport. Is, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that is correct. Okay. Is, um, is there a specific reason for that? Uh, look, with the, the, uh, the, the spec that was chosen for the GRS, yeah. Um, the prioritisation was given to things such as EKDSS, which does add a little bit of weight, and uh, you can still fit the, the the bull bar on the car, but the uh, the the priority was given to adding that uh, off-road technology such as EKDSS. Oh, okay, so it's a front axle load limit issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Now, um, on that front, um, the payload of the vehicles increased a little over the 200 series, um, calculate between 40 and 90 on, 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 the, on the specs there, um, and the rear axle load's gone up, gone up a little bit as well. Um, would it have been possible to just make it, because that what's come, what it come out is it's still a little bit low for many consumers, because um, they would have preferred 800 to 900, preferably um, 1,000 um, kilograms. So what, what stopped Toyota go, going as high as eight, nine hundred thousand. Yeah, th these are they're all trade-off points. Um, yeah. So when you have a vehicle at Land Cruiser that we know needs to be really good off-road because that's where customers are driving it, it mm -hmm. needs to tow, it needs to carry weight, it needs to be a comfortable drive, uh, a, a driving machine in the city. These are all trade-off points. Mm -hmm. So increasing GVW um, beyond a certain level can start to, to affect off-road and uh, on-road performance as well. So uh, it's a lot of work that goes in to try to find the optimum balance without losing too much here or there. So it's it's definitely a trade-off point. Uh, and that was chosen to be what could achieve um, the, the correct level of durability, off-road performance and on-road performance. With the uh, bar and winch package, that's a significant amount of extra weight right over the front axle. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there's, there's obviously a moment there, it's probably what, a half meter in, in front of it. Um, but I understand that the suspension package, there's no change, there's no stiffening of the springs or anything else like, like that. Is that correct? And if so- Yeah, that's, that's correct, yeah. Uh, during the development that was found that that wasn't necessary to offer that as an additional package. Um, yeah. it, it fitted within the, 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 the standard uh, performance that was, was ex that was okay, so yeah. Split tailgate is something which people love from the 200 and many people are very sad to see it go. I'm quite sort of surprised someone hasn't created, created a Twitter account for the split tailgate in the 200 yet. Yeah. Um, there's been that much sadness about it. Um, what, what led to the reasoning behind the single piece? Was it just weight or was there anything else? Oh, look, there, there is a, a weight and efficiency benefit for that. But also we actually had some feedback uh, about difficulty to get uh, packages out of the vehicle. So when you've got a uh, the, the, the tailgate that's fitted to the vehicle, the one piece, it's a lot easier to get equipment out of the front of the, the rear luggage yeah. area. Yeah, okay. Roof load limits. Um, how are the roof load limits determined and um, what exactly are they? I think it varies whether it's two or three bars on the roof. Yeah, basically the, the, the roof has a 100 kilogram uh, load capacity on it, which is a function of durability, but also being able to meet um, uh, rollover and you know, uh, regulations that, that, that pertain to vehicle dynamics. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, there is a slight weight difference between the two and the three bar uh, system. So um, the, you've got hundred kilograms of, of roof load and then you reduce the, the weight of that there, which is seven and 10 kilograms. So the, 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 the final weight of the, uh, the capacity of the roof is, or that you can, the, sorry, the final 
capacity that you can put on top of the, the roof racks themselves is 90 to 92 kilograms, depending right. on the so, so, so it's 100 kilograms, um, including the weight of the rack system itself, is what That's you're saying. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, is that an on-road weight, off-road weight? Um, because sometimes there are variations there. I believe it's the one weight across. One weight across everything. Okay. A fuel tank size. Um, some people are upset that the fuel tank has decreased. Uh, now, the efficiency has increased, but overall, the, the range of the vehicle has, has dropped um, a reasonable amount. Is that, again, for weight saving, smaller fuel tank, um, less weight? Yeah, there's there. Yeah, weight and also packaging. Um, the fuel tank's been moved in front of the rear axle, which actually improves the dynamics of the vehicle quite a lot. But yeah, it's a, it's a weight and packaging consideration went into that. Okay. Now the fuel filter on the diesel is in an unusual spot. I, I haven't seen one myself, but I believe it's round by the by the rear of the vehicle. Um, what, what's it doing over there? That, that's, that's not where you'd normally find it. Uh, that was purely a packaging uh, uh, decision that was made. Uh, it's near where the, the pickups of the tanks are. Um, okay. During all of our testing, that's not been a, been an, an issue. Another problem you often get when you're traveling remote is potential variable quality of diesel. It might have been around for a while, possibly slightly contaminated, etc. So that's always a concern. And nobody wants a super highly strung diesel, which, which is going to give up at the first sight of um, anything not absolutely pure. Any design features in the 300, which I guess deal with potentially lower quality diesels than normal? Uh, the, the, the fuel filter uses the uh, and separator uses the, the, the information gained over the over the years that have been out there. And uh, actually, when we do our durability testing, we always use local fuel to uh, to try to weed out if there's any of these kind of issues. The snorkel. Uh... Asked in the um, press conference, uh, um, and it determined that it wasn't actually sealed, so it's just a raised air intake. Uh, why wouldn't the snorkel be fully fully waterproofed and sealed? I think it, it, it's a similar design to what was on the, the 200 series. It is up above a meter, uh, more than a meter above the ground. So in terms yeah. of um, being above a, a, even a very deep water crossing, um, yeah. the connection from the uh, uh, outside the body into the inside the body it is a tight fit with a with the foam but it's not a it's not a rubber seal so it's designed to be outside the uh, above the water line in even very deep water crossings and to pick up the the, the clean air but it hasn't been designed as a, a submersible um uh snort. i seem to recall from the prototype drive that the cooling system is a bit over over specified um to allow for things like driving lights etc mm-hmm yeah, so and that's part of the um, uh, the key feedback we get from Australia customers, especially people do. Uh, you, you're fitting uh, accessories, not 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 just for fun. You know, they do look good, but yeah. people are fitting the accessories to be functional. So you need to have that 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 accessory functionality can't impact the core vehicle. So this is actually a vehicle where right from the beginning, having the accessories fitted was part of the development of the car. The accessories aren't an afterthought. They, the, the genuine accessories are actually developed in from the beginning of the platform. And so when we do testing, you know, we, we, we try to go worst case things like putting driving lights or you know, what is the, the, the worst case that a typical customer will drive the vehicle needs to be able to be um, uh, to be able to perform in that there. So yeah, the core vehicle um, has some margin in it, so that when you are fitting the accessories, it still performs exactly as advertised. Oh yeah, tires. So gone from a two eight five to a two six five, uh, and that's the same overall diameter. So that's important for off roading, but mm -hmm. um, narrower. And that has the effect of reducing weight and particularly unspun mass and rotating mass. So it's a massive win um, for fuel consumption in particular. Um, what effect does that have on vehicle handling and off-road capability move to a narrower tire? Yeah, so right at the beginning of the, the program, one of the, the key targets was to improve efficiency of the vehicle and going to a narrower tire does have those efficiency advantages. But it was also recognised that tyre on a Land Cruiser needs to do a, a pretty tough job. So these are these are not any 265 tyre. They are a specially developed tyre for Land Cruiser 300 that had a lot of testing happening in Australia to make sure that the uh, off-road performance and durability and on-road performance uh, meets or exceeds the previous tyre. And actually, by doing a lot of that uh, work in Australia, we were able to improve the development process for the tyres to get an, an even better tyre. Okay. Well, what effect does a narrow, narrower tyre generally have on vehicle performance relative to a wide one if they're both the same diameter? 
uh, usually a, a wider tyre uh, will, uh, on road, yeah, typically you, you, you can get more, more traction with a wide tyre for the amount of weight. But because we've had a weight reduction of the car um, and the new tyre technology that's gone into this, that uh, the, the, the narrower tyre performs at least as well, if not better than the previous tyre. Thanks for watching. Don't forget the other LC300 videos. And if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments.